you guys glad to know you are watching your program those of you watching us in far away abuja port harcourt wherever you are watching the program after the shows those of you or even on youtube and twitter it is your program this is business and economy network my name is peter Muoche. i want to say a big thank you for allowing us into your homes offices wherever you are watching this program now let me start by asking this question is there a level playing field for nigerian indigenous engineers are engineers in nigeria today are they, do they have the capacity to handle international standard projects? Projects being handled by multinationals today, can they be handled by indigenous engineers? These are questions begging for an answer, and this is going to be the tips, and these are some of the things we are going to look at today, and we have the Nigerian Society of Engineers president, and otherwise the chairman of MBS Engineering is in the house, and not left out too. Is a renowned architect, the chairman of Parks Associates, a former director with NDDC. They're all in the house to throw more light on this. It's a loaded program. And for company in focus, today we are showcasing Megavon West African Limited. And for Straight Talk, today we have the managing director, chief executive officer of Best Land and Sea a company doing very well in the oil and gas sector of the Nigerian economy. It's going to be an interesting watch. I'll be back after this time out. Sinex loves to promote the idea that Nigerian engineers cannot handle projects that are of international standards. Truly looking around, various infrastructures like the railways have fallen below international standards. Many other infrastructures around Nigeria need facelifts. The Nigerian government is not prepared to take over the construction industry. We have all the engineers that we require. What is lacking is the equipment. And there is no country that has ever developed, particularly in the construction industry, who, who, that, that has, has not closed its doors mm. to foreigners for some time. After all, what, what are they building? They are building roads and bridges. If we, have, if we want to develop, to, to take over this industry, we must have to close our doors and do it by ourselves. We will make mistakes and we will correct them. But that, no government is, is tackling that. We are over 50 years old mm. and yet we cannot produce one sizable indigenous uh, contractor in the, build, in, the, in, the, in the building industry. And this is the industry that produces, that is supposed to be the major employer of labor. But I can tell you, they are not employing. And even when they are employing, they are paying the Nigerians peanuts. So my advice would be, and I will, I will say this, I, want, I would like to see a situation where the Nigerian government, whether state or federal, can take time and say, look, let us develop uh, building a construction industry. What if you go around and check all the foreign firms? If you see a hundred workers on site, maybe you see two or three white men. So who are doing the job? The Nigerians. So what is lacking? The equipment. So why can't we import the equipment, this equipment, and get Nigerians to form consortium, to form big companies, and you lease this equipment out to them. Give them roads to build, for goodness sake. And let us see if they will not do it. Because that is the only thing that is lacking, the equipment. 
But because we are, our administrators don't want to take the risk, only don't know why they don't want to do that. And I can tell you, if we don't do this, and we continue to, to siphon our money out of this country, because in every budget, the construction industry takes over 60% of the budget every year. And who is benefiting from it? It is capital flight. And they are not even employing Nigerians. They are not, they're not employing. So, I would advise the government, both state and federal, let them please import equipment. Challenge the Nigerian Society of Engineers and Architects. Let them form companies. After all, the roads come consulted by foreign companies, don't they collapse? So we we'll do it, if, we fail, if it fails, we'll do it again until we are, we are able to solve. That is what China did. That is what Japan did. Every country did that. And Nigeria cannot be an exception. We can't, we can't be oh, we're talking about bring foreign contractors, bring foreign contractors. For how long will we bring foreign contractors? We have the brains. So make use of our, your brains and get this place to develop. And, and I tell you, when you get this foreign the local contractors to, 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 to be big, they are going to create employment more than what these this, this, uh, foreign contractors are doing. They are, they are not employing Nigeria. And even when they employ, I don't see any of them paying a Nigerian a engineer maybe more than 200,000 naira a month. Whereas a technician they bring in we can be paid $5,000, $10,000 a month. So we are not helping ourselves. We are not helping ourselves. So I, I think I, I want you in the media to, to drum this into the ears of our administrators. We must close our doors. Must close our doors. There is nothing the Nigerian engineer cannot do. What is in most cases, the problem is actually not that of the Nigerian engineer, but of the government. It has been noted that Nigerian engineers can perform as well as their international counterparts if the opportunity for it is given. Experts agree that when Nigerian engineers leave the shores of Nigeria, they perform even better than their counterparts in those countries. Nigerian engineers have been involved in supervising the construction of bridges that have lasted for several decades without needing any maintenance. From I mean, as NSC president, right from the day one, that is on the day of my inauguration, I invited almost all the professional uh, institutes, the leadership of all the pro professional institutions, because over time I realized that we have the same problem and uh, we have the same challenges as professional bodies, as Nigerians, as professionals. And uh, the challenge, it, it, to, to, as far as I'm concerned, is uh, the fact that we find ourselves in Nigeria, of which, which is our own country, but uh, there are no policies safeguarding our interests adequately to the level that our existence is uh, even being threatened because there is a large influx of uh, foreign professionals coming into this country. And a lot of such professionals are not any specialists in areas where you don't have such expertise. We know we can't uh, beat our chest and say that we are so independent, so uh, to the extent that we don't need any foreign professional in this country but you see there are professionals that come into this country to do nothing more than what we can do and if we don't put our heads together as professionals engineers architects quantity surveyors builders and all to put our we are not uh, talking of endangering the engineering professionals but endangering all professionals in this country because there are countries today in this world that by policy they want to generate or you know churn out as many professionals as the world will need as the world will need or have 
have the requirement of the world. And if they drop a small percentage of such professionals, you are not talking of only engineers or builders, even craftsmen, technicians, technologists will not have a job to do in Nigeria. And uh, you and I are Nigerians. We don't have any other country but Nigeria. And if we don't have you know, our job protected, secured in Nigeria, where else can we have? And we decided to be here. Of course, some of us have decided to be ab abroad, but that is somebody's own uh, personal choice. I will not blame him, and neither should you also blame me for deciding to be here. So if I decide to be here, at least the, the policies should be, you know, made in such a way that I, my interest is well, is well protected. And uh, those of us, uh, you know, managing engineering firms, the secret of uh, growth, because pe people keep asking me, why is, that, is it that uh, professional engineering firms are not growing? Or you, or they are not, you don't see very large, you know, mega consulting firms or mega engineering firms. The, 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 the reason is, 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 is not far-fetched. It's simple. If there is deliberate, consistent policy of patronage mm -hmm. of those companies, those Nigerian companies, there is no reason why they cannot grow. But today you are being patronized. You have, you know, uh, scores of uh, professionals working with you. Mm -hmm. after, after some years, you find that patronage becomes difficult. So in spite of the fact that you are employing scores of engineers, you know, dozens of engineers, you know, you, 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 if you don't have a job for them to do, what can you do? So you find that uh, you are, once your survival is threatened, then you have to start, you know, shedding weight. So if there is, a, you know, deliberate policy of uh, consistent patronage of the engineering, Nigerian engineering firms, or Nigerian firms generally, be it engineering or even non-engineering non firms, you will see growth. Nobody wants to stay small. Nobody wants to stay small. Everybody wants to grow. But then the enabling atmosphere is not there. The printing industry is a necessity to education, commerce and information. The industry is largely responsible for everything paperwork, school textbooks, receipts and everything involving paperwork instructional materials. For the next 30 years or more, the world cannot overrule on paperwork as the need for it is very important. Even the paperless world in which we live in is not able to rule out the production of paper for educational purposes and in other respects. By the grace of God and opportunity given to me by my colleagues, I'm the managing director CEO. Uh, we have a chairman that is uh, rotated before now among five countries, but uh, since last year we have a chairman that will come from Nigeria, God willing, so all the time. Um, Megavons West African Limited came into the scene of uh, private sector printing side in 1987 as a baby of agreement. It was a convention among five countries in West Africa that speak English to see how they can 